National Historic Park today. We stayed in Santa Fe last night. And this is located uh, maybe half an hour or so outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico on our way back to Utah.
churl sheep. And so there's this huge um, wool program we have down there. So, so what's the first thing, if you want yarn, what's the first thing you have to do? Do you know? Do you have any? Go ahead. I'm going back even further. Glasses down. I think they'll be safe. Exactly. Now watch that you don't get him in the belly. And that's just like brushing a dog. You know. I don't have the kids with me, but so how old are you? How old are you? Five. This would have been one of your jobs. Everybody had to help because there was so much to do. These are hard. So why don't you pass them to the next? So we will like get you all in here. And then, careful. Watch, watch, you. you don't get an elbow. Don't, watch you. Get back up. Give them don't push down, drag them sort drag of off across. of each other. There you go. All grow together, it sticks to each other, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what wool does when I twist it. And then I will take this home after I get. So, this is what I took directly off of. This. Wow. I did this out at the ranch. But then you take this home, wash it, stretch it, and that's what it looks like. Doesn't that look like um your shirt? Well, your shirt or, or just yarn. Really good yarn. Yep. But then the Spanish really liked color in the red dye pot and you get pink. So you can see. You can see this. You, this is almost the right red, and then you here's the pink. But if you put like juniper ash, I also like purple. Purple. Yeah. What two colors make purple? Red and I think red and blue. Blue. By the uh, uh, this is probably a French. It's a French style, so French trappers probably traded it. Uh, with indigenous tribes, there was three trade fairs where there would be a temporary truce where people would trade people, merchandise, valuables, pelts, pottery, and this was one of the three trade fairs here at Pecos. Second one is Taos, third one is Abiquiu. You said this was two, over 200 years old, right? This is about 240 years old. And Ash, did you hear that? Spot, so I'm going to take that now because I know you love it. And it, we don't want it to go down. Uh, yeah, this this is a cut down Spanish cavalry sword. They didn't like the long ones. They weren't effective out here. And this eventually became the machete. These blades got about this length, a little bit shorter and a little wider, particularly in the Spanish colony in the Philippines is where this machete is. But this one was actually carried by the garrison. Or it could have been given to a Spanish militia. Uh, doubtful if this was because it's so classic Spanish with a bone handle, mm. probably wouldn't have been given to the uh, militia at the Pueblos. This thing could have been carried by the Comanches. Or, no, it's, it's, it's decorated as Spanish. But this type of weapon could have been the Spanish militia or, any, the, or the Pueblos or, or, or the surrounding tribes. That's a Media Luna. It's a modern weapon. I mean, it's modern reproduction. It originally was a 13th, uh, 14th century Italian weapon. What you can do is you can unhorse someone, or if you're in your castle or fortification in Europe, you could push away scaling ladders without pushing it with your hand and going, hey there. Yeah, sticking your head out over yeah, yeah, no, really. And you've got a lot of leverage, and you get two or three people on that. So even if it's heavy, you push them over. Yeah. Now here, these were used uh, to pursue an animal or a rider and an animal, and you would hamstring the animal to bring it down hmm. or to slow it down. Cut, cut the leg, leg and bring them down or, or stop, stop them. Yeah. And this eventually was used in ranching out here for, uh, well, almost till the 1900s. Hmm.